Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the Norma Occipitalis. The Norma Occipitalis is convex upwards on each side and flattened below. Now let's look at the bones seen in the Norma Occipitalis. The posterior parts of the parietal bone are seen above. The upper part of the squamous part of the occipital bone is seen below and the mastoid part of the temporal bone that you see here is seen on each side here and here. Moving on to the suture seen in the norma occipitalis, the lambdoid suture that you see right here lies between the occipital bone and the two parietal bones. The occipitomastoid suture that you see right here lies between the occipital bone and the mastoid part of the temporal bone. The parietomastoid suture that you see right here lies between the parietal bone and the mastoid part of the temporal bone. The posterior part of the sagittal suture is also seen in the norma occipitalis. Now let's look at some of the other features of the norma occipitalis. The lambda or the posterior fontanella that you see right here is the meeting point between the sagittal and the lambdoid sutures. In the fetal skull, this is the site of the posterior fontanelle which closes at birth to 2 to 3 months of age. The external occipital protuberance that you see right here is a median prominence in the lower part of the norma occipitalis. It marks the junction of the head and the neck. The most prominent part on this protuberance is called the inion. The superior nuchal lines are curved bony ridges passing laterally from the external occipital protuberance. These also mark the junction of the head and the neck. The area below the superior nuchal lines that is right here, will be discussed along with the norma basalis. The highest nuchal lines are not always present. They are curved bony ridges situated 1 cm above the superior nuchal line. They begin from the upper part of the external occipital protuberance that is somewhere right here and are more arched than the superior nuchal lines. Now in this skull we cannot find the highest nuchal lines but we can see the superior nuchal lines as I had described earlier. The occipital point is a median point just above the inion and is the farthest point away from the glabella. The mastoid foramen is located on the mastoid part of the temporal bone at or near the occipitomastoid suture. It opens at the sigmoid sulcus internally. The mastoid foramen transmits an emissary vein and the meningeal branch of the occipital artery. The interparietal bone is a triangular bone located at the apex of the squamous occipital. It is occasionally present and cannot be seen in this specimen of the skull. This is not a sutural or accessory bone but represents the membranous part of the occipital bone which has failed to fuse with the rest of the bone. Now let us learn about the attachments of muscles and ligaments on the norma occipitalis. Firstly, the trapezius originates from the upper part of the external occipital protuberance right here. The ligamentum nuchae is attached to the lower part of the external occipital protuberance. This muscle you see here is the trapezius. This is the ligamentum nuchae. The medial one-third of the superior nuchal line gives origin to the trapezius and the lateral part provides insertion to the sternocleidomastoid above and to the splenius capitis below. This is the sternocleidomastoid and this is the splenius capitis. The highest nuchal lines, if present, provide attachment to the epicranial aponeurosis and give origin to the occipitalis or occipital belly of the occipitofrontalis muscle. In case of absence of the highest nuchal lines, 
these structures are attached to the superior nuchal lines. This is the epicranial aponeurosis and this is the occipital belly of the occipitofrontalis muscle. Now an easy way to remember the attachments on the norma occipitalis is the use of the mnemonic lost easily. Please note that the green color indicates the attachment, red color indicates the origin of muscles and the blue color indicates the insertion of muscles. Now the L stands for the attachment of the ligamentum nuchae, O for the origin of the occipital belly of the occipitofrontalis muscle, S for the insertion of the sternocleidomastoid, T for the origin of the trapezius, EA for the attachment of the epicranial aponeurosis and S for the insertion of the splenius capitis. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my upcoming videos on the skull, please refer to my channel playlist given in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.